Hello and welcome back to a new video here on the Ludwig Fusel channel. Now this video is now the in-depth tutorial for my new public template repository MoxPP offered by my company Moxibyte that I have founded for YouTube and other stuff and this is the first service that is offered by the company. It is a free to use uh, template repository for C++. Now before we're gonna get into the introduction on how this is all working, uh, I want to quickly talk about the components that we have in here. Well we have two components in here premake 5 and conan especially conan 2 now the idea of premake 5 is to build a cross-platform build system that can generate a native uh, visual studio solution on windows and gnu make files on linux and this is basically the idea that i wanted to follow here as well i want to use something that's cross-platform but still um, kind of like generates native data people on linux love to work with their make files people on windows love to have a proper visual studio project that's properly integrated premake can bring all of that it brings this in a nice configurable way it has lua so basically we have all options available to kind of like program how your project generation is going on and that is also exactly what happens in MoxPP. You're going to have something called mox.lua. This is a Lua configuration file where you can basically change the behavior of the build system, add your own configuration, source folder, change the architecture, prefixes for the default macros, callback functions that can be used alternatively so that you can also do your own automation task. There's a hell of a lot of stuff going on here that's making your life easier and all that complicated implementation is hidden in the scripts that I have implemented so that everything works simple under the hood or complicated and powerful under the hood but simple for you the user that want to use it. Um, the other component that we use here is uh, Conan, Conan 2 especially. Now Conan 2 is a uh, is a dependency management tool. It's a package manager actually, but it's used here as a dependency management tool. So what you're going to have is a Conan file.py. This is a plain Conan file. I haven't really changed anything on how Conan works. Um, the general idea here is that you can, uh, inside of the dev requirements function, require packages. In this case, we were using SPD log to say hello with SPD log because we want to show off here in the default implementation of the um, of the library that actually pre uh, that actually SPD log works and Conan works and all these systems play together nicely without you having to actually do something. Um, now the general idea is Conan is going to bring you in external dependencies and uh, Premake 5 is going to give you the flexibility of doing your projects. You can go as far and completely customize the whole repository, changing how the scripts behave and everything. This is why it is a template repository and why it's not like shipped as a pip package that kind of like provides a few default scripts. Now let's actually get started and diving into it so that we can see how it works. Now I want to create a new repository to that and this is not actually going to be um, staying here. So it's going to be the MoxPP to tutorial. Maybe can we make a space in here? I mean spaces are I think not allowed uh, because it will be created with a dash. But maybe the dash is okay. But I can then just put in the dash myself. So this is a tutorial for the MoxyByte MoxPP C++ template, template, repo, repo repository. Now this is of course going to be public because I want to want you to also be able to uh, take a look at these. And it's also my personal account. I could do this here officially at the MoxyBytes account, but um, I don't think we want to do this. We want to separate that. All of the examples shall be in... Uh, my personal repositories, but I'm going to link to my personal repository from the public one from the company when the video is done. Now let's create this from template and now it's been generated. We're going to wait a, a few seconds as you have seen maybe in the video we have done this in like under three minutes. It's fast. There we go. It is already here. What we can do now is we can clone it to our local machine. Uh, no, CMD. There we go. Very simple. Just a simple git clone and then I'm going to paste in the the uh, URL for the project and then we have um, downloaded it. It is, it is small, right? Uh, what has it done? Do I see the size somewhere? No, I don't. But uh, the download was quick. It's not very heavy. I mean, there are like, I think a thousand lines of code in the template repository, but it is not that big. 
Now, all ed a thousand, a thousand editions in Git, but editions are sometimes counted as a bit different. Also, there's a bit of documentation attached to it. Now, um, how do we want to get started? Well, we want to get started by opening up the readme.md because the readme.md is basically telling you how to use this template. And this is a readme that you're going to, at some point down here, it's going to tell you that you, sh that you shall remove this readme file and then replace it with your own file. So actually what happens here is that this is just a tutorial for you setting this up the first time and when you are done with it you can then transform it to your own readme now let's get started by um actually let me maybe do i have the, the template uh, yeah i have uh, not the template the plugin installed so in visual studio code so that i can actually read this uh, as a preview if you are curious um i think how was it called or is it is it oh it seems like that it is Currently, it's actually a default feature that's now in Visual Studio Code. Oh, that's that's good to know. Previously, it was not a default thing. Okay, that's good to know. Now, uh, important things to know. Now, there are two limitations to the current version of this template repository. Now, the first limitation is uh, that it can only do Windows builds on Windows, so it can only uh, create projects for Windows on Windows, and it can only create projects for Linux on Linux. So Windows is supported, Linux is supported, but there's no fancy stuff like cross-compile, no. It is just very basic, Windows on Windows, Linux on Linux. Now, uh, the next thing, the limitation that we have is that the project only supports x64 builds, so currently just x64. Um, I might in the future maybe try to implement some ARM features so that you can maybe compile it for a Raspberry Pi. Um, this is something that I might want to get there in the future as well. However, I don't currently have a Raspberry Pi at hand. And uh, currently, we are just at x64. But this is something that's probably going to change, that we can also have some ARM, some ARM architectures. Now, let's talk about the dependencies that we need for using this uh, yeah, template. Now, first of all, you need Python, Python 3. And you need Conan 2. So Conan 2, we already have a tutorial for that. It is, if you don't have it, basically just a pip install Conan and you're going to get the latest version of it, which is then going to be 2.04 currently and everything from 2.04 up to the latest version is probably going to work. I'm going to maintain my pre-make integration. So that's all good. Next uh, dependency is a Windows only dependency on Windows Visual Studio is required. I don't support any other IDE or make files and CG when no currently just Visual Studio and I would recommend that you use it anyways, however you want to turn it around. Now the next requirement is a Linux only requirement. On Linux you should, especially Ubuntu I think is it, uh, you should install a build essentials uh, package. This is basically giving you uh, the GCC compiler or G++ compiler and it gives you a GMake, also GNU make and um, it gives you like all the, the, the requirements that you that you need to build on Linux and if you have the package you are good and most of you are probably going to use Ubuntu for compiling and if you don't you need to have something similar to that. Now there's also a building.md that is uh, also provided with the project. We're going to take a look at this as soon as we're going to get to it. Building.md is designed to actually stay there and it's going to give you uh, some extensive uh, information on how to actually build the project even if you are kind of like done with your uh, building uh, with your Oh no, I am on building.md. This is not something that I want. There we go. Readme.md. There we go. Now um, this building.md is basically telling you how uh, how you build the project and shall be redistributed with your uh, project then as well later. Now, what you want to do as soon as you kind of like uh, have checked all dependencies and make sure that your system is ready, uh, then you want to start with the checklist. The checklist is basically giving you a direction on how to set up everything and we're going to follow it step by step. Maybe I do want to now open up the source code so that we then can actually put in the access here if we are done. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to check that the project runs on our system. This is uh, just a simple check to, so that you know that your setup is uh, correctly uh, set it up. How can you do this? You want to open up a new terminal here. The, by default, this is still opening up a, um, uh, a, 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 a PowerShell. Let me quickly reconfigure that so that we know I don't want to have a git bash. Uh, terminal new. This should now open up a CMD because I have reconfigured it. Now, um, we have 
two scripts in here that can be used, a batch script for Windows and the shell script for Linux. If you are on Windows, you can directly type in mox.bat or you could type in dot slash mod mox.bat, but you can also just type in uh, not bat, but mox. Because what Windows does is it, it treats batch and comment line files, so dot cmd and dot batch files uh, is going to be treated like a application, also dot exe. If you just write mox, it kind of like tries to find the exe a batch or a comment line file and since we have one we can just plainly write mocks and in this case we shall do a mox init to initialize our project and if I do this multiple things happen um, now the first thing that will happen is that it downloads premake 5 after that it uh, runs Conan twice one time for release and one time for debug and then the next thing that happens is that uh, premake 5 is invoked and premake 5 is then gonna generate your uh, visual studio solution and projects now um conan is going to produce this dependencies folder actually also premake 5 uh, is uh, producing this because premake 5 is actually inside the dependencies directory where we now have the exe file and the temporary file that's never going to be deleted but that's okay and what we also have is um, all the dependencies that we need for uh, for premake now if you are interested in how that works i recommend my um, code on uh, 2.0 tutorial or 2.x tutorial for the newer um, Conan versions where I have um, explained how this all works. The extension for Conan that is doing the generation for Premium is also actually maintained by, by me. I've implemented that and if it breaks, um, I'm also going to fix it. So I have nearly everything under control on this repository. The only thing that I don't have under control is kind of like Conan itself and Premake itself, but they won't really break. Now this one is basically generated by Conan and um, now also we have that SLN file, that SLN file is uh, generated by um, by basically our uh, system here, by the template repository and what we can do, we can open this up, you can open this up with the explorer or just type in the full name and it will automatically open this as long as you have the file associations with uh, Visual Studio. And what you can do is you can open this up. You can see this is our hello world with SPD log. I'm going to press a five to quickly show you that it's working. It's going to compile this. It might take a bit longer compiling because Conan still has an issue of not copying PDB files and Microsoft tries to find them and it can't. So at some times this might take, uh, but this is also something that in the future might uh, be fixed. Now, now you can see that we have like this uh, nice little warning hello world, which means that everything works. So what we have now actually verified is that it works in our case. So let me quickly go in here and actually fill out this checklist. We have checked it on Windows. We haven't checked this on Linux yet. Uh, we're going to go to Linux at the end of the video if you're a Linux developer. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a primary Windows developer. I always start at Windows and what I am doing, if I'm doing cross-platform projects, I implement them. I, I do the main coding on Windows with like debugging and everything. Thing, and at the end I moved the project to Linux. I have done a project, a university project, which was not really in a university scope. It was like a gateway system with a web server, a API, MQTT, Modbus, and a hell of a lot of features. I have implemented this all completely on Windows and porting to Linux was not an issue because I have I use cross platform libraries and I used a similar tool chain that then what I have used here. This is way more advanced than what I've used back in the other project um, because it's way more mature. What you're seeing here but you see here that i have experience in that stuff i have done this multiple times i have done like three projects uh with the tool chain on um on, on windows and linux cross platform before i have developed this library and not larry it's a template repository i don't know but i really stuck at the, at the term library Okay, so I don't want to talk too much. Let's actually take a look at what we are doing. We are not going to do the Linux stuff yet. We're going to do this later on. Uh, we're going to follow on here. Now, uh, what the repository suggests is that we are taking a look at mox.lua. It is the configuration file for your repository. We shall understand this and modify it for our need. So mox.lua is a global configuration file that configures how the pre-make build steps work. Now uh, here are multiple things that you can change. Actually everything that's kind of like blue is changeable. Uh, 
Um, they are all nicely described. So for example, the, the product name, this is the name used for the product provided by this uh, re repo on Windows used as the solution name. Now, what you can see that the solution here it is called MoxPP. It says MoxPP all over the place. The file is called MoxPP.sln. That's not good. We don't want to have this for our project. We want to have our project name. So instead of MoxPP in this case, I want to have tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm, um, I'm going to adapt this and change this one here to tutorial. Now the next two things are the configurations. In this case, we have a debug and the release configuration. Um, we have two uh, arrays that are specifying that. The first array are giving the name for the configurations and the second, con the second array is going to indicate if these are debugging configurations. Now this is important since we are using um, Conan as a, as, a, as a manager for dependencies and um, Conan only knows the term release and debug. So what we are basically doing here for the mocks tutorial or what I'm doing in, behind this, I'm kind of like simulating just two configurations to Conan, debug and release. And this is kind of like the mapping between them. If you have them to true, they are a debug configuration and false, uh, they are a release configuration. This is also used internally so that I can internally correctly set, it, set these configurations up without you having to deal with that. So if you want to add a configuration, for example, if you want to deploy something, or for example, if you are developing a game, you might have debug and release, or most of the time you're going to have debug, development, and then maybe something like, release for Steam, or in this case if you want, and want to kind of like add a deployment configuration for Steam, you would have something like deploy Steam, and then you would have maybe have something deploy Microsoft Store, and then you would basically do it like that to add a new configuration to your um, package. I'm just gonna call this one deploy here out of simplicity to, simplicity to uh, make this a bit easier to understand. So I'm, I'm just gonna add a deploy configuration just to show you that it works. Now, um, the next thing that's going on here is the, the source folder. As you can see, all the source code here was stored inside of the source folder. This might be fine for some project, but at some point people like to have the, the project name and their include path. So instead of having like the include directories, um, just kind of like as, um, for example, this is called hello world, then now the include path would be hello world, uh, my class.h, for example. And if you might kind of like want to have like the overall name, you could change that one to tutorial, rename this folder to tutorial, and then the include path would be tutorial, hello world, my class.h, for example. Of course, the current path is not near that, but we're going to get to it. Uh, for this tutorial here, I'm just going to leave it at Zeus because I'm fine with Zeus. Uh, now, the next setting is the most complicated one. This is the project architecture. Now, I support four types of architecture of the projects. And with project architecture, um, the layout of the source is meant. By default, it is providing a, a single architecture. Single architecture means that you just have one project. So one solution, one project, one executable, just one build artifact. In this case, it's an application and uh, it's, it's called Hello World, but this is a different story because this is all configured in here. Now, each project that you have in your repository is uh, gonna be described by a build.lua file. We're gonna get to the build.lua file later on. This is gonna do something like setting up the project names, setting up C++ and what kind of project project it is and um, but the, the takeaway for now is just that you're going to need a build.lua file per project and the nice thing is that the repository here the template is configured so that these build.lua files are automatically discovered and included there's no need to list them all manually but what you need is you need to tell it how the architecture is of your project if you're providing a single architecture it will just go to your source directory however it's configured here and it will just search for one global build.lua file and this is then just a single project now you also have different uh, features that are available. We're going to try them all later. But for now, I'm just, just want to explain it quickly. Uh, you have the option to do a flat architecture. So basically, flat means that each project is stored in a subdirectory inside your source directory. So basically, you would have something like source, hello world build.lua, source, uh, my console application.lua, source, um, my library, then there are also a build.lua file. So kind of like a flat architecture. You have a source directory, there are subdirectories, and each subdirectory is a project. And in each of these project directories, there's a build. Lua file. 
We also have the option for a hierarchical layout. So for example, if you have a way more complicated project that consists out of multiple libraries, multiple tools, and kind of like a main uh, executable, um, you could do this in a hierarchical layout. This is basically a two level of indirection. So you have a source uh, directory, then you have kind of like your groups like libs, tools and executables and inside of these folders or so the folder lib there are going to be multiple subfolders and each of these subfolders are then going to be a project with their own dedicated build.lua file and they are in visual studio nicely grouped in the solution directories we're going to take an example at this later on we're going to later on try this all out so that you can actually see how this all comes together for now i still want to keep it at single now the next kind of um, customization that's coming in here is uh, the macro prefix. Uh, the macro prefix uh, is a prefix that will be uh, appended to all non-default macros. So what I am going to supply are the default macros like debug and debug, uh, but I'm also providing different macros. For example, like a macro if it is a static library, a shared library, an application, a windowed application, a console application. And what you can do is you can basically tell it that we shall prefix that. I want to do this here in this case. I want to uh, have the prefix hello underscore uh, before all of these macros so that they are correctly prefixed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the prefix here, uh, hello underscore. All right, the next thing that you need to do after you have made these modifications is you need to run in it again. It's actually not telling you that here. Uh, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to, as soon as you're going to use that, that, that uh, template, it's going to be in here. However, I know what you need to do. What you need to do is uh, you need to re-init the project. However, if I would directly re-init, uh, it would create a, a another solution file. And um, if it creates another solution file, we have two of them. Uh, however, there's a solution for that. What you can do is you can run mox clean. And in this case, you want to clean the project file so you can actually run mox clean project and if you're running mox clean project it will remove all the project files like solution files and vcx project files you can see that they are gone and now i can do another mox in it so that they are now recreated with the proper names so now you can actually see that it's no longer called mox.sln now it's called tutorial.sln and i can open up tutorial.sln here the same way that i've done this previously previously but now i have of course my customized name and i should also have my customized macros instead of hello world so if i would actually take a look at the properties of hello world maybe go to debug and then go to c plus plus and the preprocessor i can actually open this up and take a look at this so you can actually see that the debug macro is defined this is a default macro but then you can also see that hello underscore debug is defined then we have two macros from FD, uh, spd log that are required by spd log and then down here i can actually see that hello app and hello console is specified which basically tells you that it is an application and be even more precise a console application now this is all done automatically without you needing to do anything and you can see that i've provided the prefix in my global configuration file in my mox.lua file i've provided the prefix here and it's going to be automatically updating every project with all of these macros so you have a uniform way of actually describing all of that stuff it's uniformly across everything it's done automatically and that's kind of like the idea that you have and for release of course it's also there and you can already see that my deploy configuration is now also here you can actually even see that deploy is also reflected as a macro so you can see that the the configuration is even seen in here so but you can kind of like see that everything has been been correctly patched into that and to just show you that really everything works i want to quickly compile on deploy because this is now a customized configuration that needs to use a release version of conan and a special configuration here so if that one works everything is gonna work so i'm gonna do a quick compile here to see that everything works and you can see it has been correctly generated hello world.exe has been spilled out into the deploy binary directory in my build subdirectory so everything is good by the way this is something that i might shall also say uh, as soon as you are building your uh, project the our build output will go into build directory so you can see that we have the debug and the deploy subdirectory here so deploy is going to contain a bin directory with the exe files and the obj directory with sub directory hello world with all the intermediates same also goes for uh, debug it is all nicely ordered in here in the directory 
So this also uh, gives us a check and, and at taking a look at mox.lua and modifying it to our needs. Now the next step is that we shall read and understand how um, build.lua works. Now build.lua is the uh, file found under the source directory. And this is basically the file that tells Premake how to build the project. It has been customized by custom functions for the template that helped you doing everything. And in general, what you want to do is you always want to use three of these functions, always these three or the three of these kinds of function to customize your build. So um, most of the time um, you maybe even need more setup, but the very basic setup if you're not doing something advanced is just three function calls and everything else is going to be handled by the template itself, by the system mox pp under the hood. Now, uh, what you can see is that we're going to start with that line five here. Everything else is like a comment that's kind of like explaining how all of, all of this works. We're going to modify this and I'm actually going to throw them all out because I don't need them, right? The documentation, maybe you want to at least keep them. But in our case, to so just make this a bit more simpler, I'm going to remove all of them because I kind of like acknowledged how they work. Now, uh, what you can see is that the first step that we are going to do is we're going to call a function called mox project. Now the mox project function takes two arguments. One of them is optional. The last one is optional. You can actually get away with not specifying it at all, which we actually going to do in our modified version of the project. Now what this one is doing is basically it is uh, creating a new project. It is defining that a new project is starting. And this is always the first line, the first line of code that you want to have in a build.lua file. If this is not the first line of code, you're going to break stuff. You're going to break the other project that was handled before of that because of on how Premake is designed. So the first line in every build.lua file that is code that's going to execute is going to be the mox project line. Now this um, has two arguments. The first argument of the function is the name of the project. In this case, it's called Hello World. And the second argument is the actual target name, so the name of the executable. In this case, you can see that the project is called Hello World um, as one word with like camel case. And um, the next uh, argument here, the target name, so the name of the executable, shall actually be Hello underscore word with everything in lowercase. Now, if you take a look at this in the source directory, you can actually see that our VCX projects are called Hello World with like camel case. And if I go to my build directory and my output, you can actually see that the hello world.exe is like in lowercase with the underscore and the pdb is also named in the same naming scheme. Now uh, we want to change this here just out of curiosity to show you how all of this works. I want to have this all as a single thing and I just want to call this one hello just as simple as that to modify it. Now the next line of code that's going to happen, this is here in line 11, is going to uh, tell the system which language is used. You have three options here. You can use plain C. In this case, you would just call the function mock C without uh, uh, any arguments. This will set the whole project to be on a uh, C compiler. Then the next option that you have is uh, you have the option mox C++ or mox underscore C++ uh, with an optional argument of C++ uh, PP standard. Now this is basically defining the project is a C++ project and in quotation marks you can define the C++ standard that you want to use. It is optional if you don't specify it, CPP20 is used. In this case I have used it explicitly, but we could remove this, it would have the same effect. Now, uh, the next um, possibility that we would have, we would have the possibility to use mox underscore CS for C sharp. This can be used to build uh, .NET Framework projects um, up to .NET Framework 4.6, which is the uh, default version. If you do not provide a .NET version, this could be used, for example, if you're doing like a, a scripting for your, for your game, for example, you could do scripting in C sharp and have this all in one solution and then handled by the system as well. But we want to do this C++ here. I'm also going to remove the block here and move this up so that it's getting easier and easier. And now you can basically see how this all comes together. We are creating the project hello and now we are telling it it is a C++ project. Now this is not all information that's um, sufficient. We also need to tell which type of uh, project we are creating. Now C++ has so multiple versions. We can do an executable. We can do a shared library and we can do a, a static library. Now if we are on Windows, we also have more options for the executable. On Windows there are classical console applications that run in the console and there are windowed applications that um, that are running uh, with no console. You, if you want to have a console you need to manually allocate this and you're going to have a hell of a lot of a bad time to get the correct console set up if you want to do it like that. So Windows has kind of like two options here. On Linux it's uh, not relevant on Linux uh, windowed and console is the same.
Now, um, all of them here in this case are just done here by a, by a simple function call, no arguments at all. You can do mox console for a console application, mox windowed for a windowed application, and mox shared lib for a shared library, static lib for a static library. So basically just the name of what we want to do. In this case, we want to have a console application, and I'm again going to remove that so that it's going to look a bit more simple for you. Now, in this case, we're going to say project's name is hello. It is a C++ console application. That's basically what we are doing here. Now we have a few more options that we can do. You can take a look at the premake 5 documentation. Basically everything that works in premake works in this build lua.file as well because it is basically a premake context. So I'm going to acknowledge that by deleting it. And down here we have a few other options here that are going to make us aware and tell us how to do something. If we want to link against other projects in here, we can use the links uh, property and then inside of curly brackets we can have a list of strings of other project names that we want to link against and if we want to um, have a project as a dependency but not really link against it for example if there's a tooling application that's used by a different application then you can use depends on uh, and also the project names to kind of like uh, set up the build order but that's also not relevant for the tutorial here we are just gonna boil this down to the most simple build uh, file that we can have just three lines to set everything up now again, since we have now con uh, customized these, that we have actually changed the name. It's going to change the name with the VCX projects, and I want to keep these names uh, kind of like these directories clean. So what I'm going to do is I'm doing uh, another mox clean project to remove the uh, solution and project files, and then I'm going to do another mox in it, which is going to reinitialize everything and regenerates all the uh, projects. And you can already see that it's now called hello.vcx project and still called tutorial.sln. Now uh, if I go a few arrows down I can actually open up tutorial.sln again and this should now also reflect the changes that we have made so basically the project is now named a bit different. Now uh, if I do another build here it shall still work. I'm still in my deploy configuration that's okay and if I do the build here you can see it succeeds because we just changed a few names. Now uh, there's one thing that is a bit ugly now um, you can see in the deploy folder we're now going to have multiple exe files and multiple pdbs. If you want to clean up your build you can also use the clean command mox clean. You can clean uh, the, uh, the outputs by doing a mox clean output. However just just a normal mox clean will automatically clean all the outputs and as you can see now the build directory is completely gone which means that everything has been cleaned successfully you do not need to do the cleaning from visual studio this is also cleaning a few more other things but you can see that still for example dependency folder it's still there and our solution files are also there so you have different clean options there available they are also all listed in uh, the documentation here all right so this also uh, checks in here now, uh, the next thing that's going to happen here is uh, inside of our, um, in our our checklist is that we now shall select the right architecture for our project. Now, currently, we have just uh, used an architecture of a simple one file project of one project solution. However, this is now no longer sufficient. I want to have a static library that is consumed by um, by our exe by our executable. So what I want to do is I want to now use the flat hierarchy to um, reflect that behavior. So what we want to do is we want to go to mox.lua. We want to change it from single to flat. And then we want to um, provide the flat architecture. To get started, um, I want to first, since I'm now moving around files, maybe again close the solution since Visual Studio is not really keen on being moved around. And then what I want to do is I want to create a subfolder here. I want to call this one hello since this is the executable and we called it hello. So it makes sense to call this one a hello as well. I'm going to move all the files in that directory hello. And this means that this is now sorted off correctly. This is actually everything that we need to do. We can now do another mox in it to reinitialize our projects. Uh, and since I have selected a different architecture, uh, it has automatically generated my hello hello that VCX project. You can see it has changed them. It also changed the solution file so it has done this correctly let's open up the uh, tutorial.sln again to see that everything is still working inside of visual studio you can see that this is giving us an error because the main file is on a different location now however if i reopen up the file it everything works correctly you can see that uh, from within visual studio there's really no change actually it might not even change if we are building it again okay it's rebuilding it uh, fair fair play because it's in a different directory so the source files and path has changed so it's rebuilding that. Okay, 
So now you can see that we have moved to that flood architecture. Now let's actually add another project so that you can see how we're working with that. Um, we now want to have the world library. So we have the hello executable and the world library now. And the world library, as soon as I'm creating a subdirectory, it also needs a build.lua file. I'm going to, as a startup, just copy the old one over, change this to world. And instead of having this at mox console, uh, I want to have this at static lib. Uh, I've forgotten how I, how it was called, um, but I think it was uh, mox static lib. I think so. This is why you should maybe keep the comments in here if you are not familiar with it. But I think it was static lib. And just that I have something in here, let me actually create a uh, world.h. and let me create a uh, world. CPP so that we have a bit of a starting point. Let's include in the world.cpp the world.h and in the world.h I want to do a hashtag pragma once quickly so that everything works. Then what I want to do of course is reinitialize the repository so that the new project gets uh, added. Now you can see that it now generated the world.vcx project and it updated the solution. I still have Visual Studio open because these changes are possible to do with Visual Studio open as, as long as you're not moving around existing projects. And now you can actually see that we have two projects in our solution. If I'm going to switch to the right view, it's also going to look less confusing. And you can see that all of these data are reflected in here. By the way, the build files are also in Visual Studio, so you can actually change the Visual Studio as well. Now, what I want to do, of course, is I want to provide a function in my um, in my in my uh, in my world library. So let's do a namespace. Uh, no, let's don't do namespaces. Namespaces are overrated. Uh, oh, oh, why not? Why not? Let's do a Harvey namespace for Hello World. Uh, HW, not Harvey, this is German. <laughs> let's then do here a, let's maybe include string here so that we uh, kind of like returning a string. And what we want to do is we want to return an STD string. Uh, get the world's famous greeting. This is the most long function for the most trivial thing that's going to happen. But that's what I want to do. Now let's create the definition in here. And the world's most famous greeting is hello world exclamation mark. And that's amazing. So really, really nice. Library is finished. Now, uh, if I would now uh, compile my hello. Uh, it would work because I'm not using the library. Um, of course, need to use it first. Now, how do I include my library? Well, uh, include directories are set up as followed. Uh, you always have your project directory as an include directory, and uh, you have your source directory as an include directory, and you have your repository as an include directory. So what I could do is I could go to source, uh, world, world.h, this would be possible. However, since uh, we are also in the source directory, it's also possible to just do world.world, .world, or at least it should be. Or I see so that I have actually forgotten to implement that feature that I wanted to have in here. However, now it's magically available because I magically just simply added the code for that. And now it works because it's actually by design intended that you can also do this from your source directory. So you can include world.world.h. And what I now want to do instead of greeting you with hello world, what I want to do without like providing any of vulnerabilities like log4j do this the proper way uh, hello world get the fame the world's famous greeting if i want to do this like that we're going to of course have a problem because linking and dependency is not set up between these projects so main is going to compile but it's not going to link because that function is not going to uh, be found unresolved external symbol so to fix this we need to go back in here and now i need to go to my uh, hello.lua and what i want to do is i want to link to or links, it needs to be plural. I need to provide one link in this links array, and I want to link to, in this case, world, so that the world is, um, this is in there. I recommend doing the Lua arrays like that, so that they are a bit more readable, especially if you're going to get more information in here. Reinitializing the project with mocks in it uh, shall give you the correct linking to world, uh, to hello, and should give the correct linking from hello to world, basically. And if I would now try to compile it, it uh, is compiling world first. Uh, 
and then it should compile a hello and hello should now compile successfully and that's it and if I now press a 5 we should still get our uh, hello world but now some code is from the static library and to see that this behavior is actually the correct one that's happening I can go into my uh, build directory uh, go into my binary directory and you can see that we're going to have a world.lib a world.p be a hello.exe and a hello.pdb so it has been correctly generated here and that's exactly what we want all right so this is basically the uh, flat architecture now what i want to do is i also want to show you uh, the hierarchical one uh, so just that you know how it works now how do we configure the hierarchical one we're going to go back to our mox.lua and instead of flat we're going to provide hierarchical as an option. Now, how do we need to do hierarchical? We need to add one level of indirection, which means that we need to copy these folders again. Copying them requires us to, rem to close Visual Studio because Visual Studio basically uses these files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder here and I'm now going to call this one lib because this is kind of like all of our static library code and this is going to go our uh, our, our, our vert is going to go in here. Then I'm going to create a new folder app for application and inside of app we're going to move all of our hello code. So now in app we have hello and in lib we have vert and now we should have them properly grouped under libs or under lib and apps. So lib and app shall now be kind of like the differentiation between all of them two. Then do another mox init shall automatically generate them all. You can see that they have regenerated the um, the files here, the project files, the user files, and also the solution here. And if we are now reopening our solution here, tutorial.sln, we should also have them properly hierarchically grouped inside of Visual Studio. Of course, we're going to, again, not find the source files because the path has changed. But now you can see that they are properly grouped in the app in the lib directory and down there it everything is still uh, as it should if i open them up here you can see the whole full hierarchy like hierarchical implements and the general idea is at the end if you are building it it doesn't matter this is just out of aesthetics and how you design your code no it is probably not building because we're now having a problem with our include pass uh, because including now doesn't work like that. Um, in the main.cpp, it will no longer find world like that because world is now inside the subdirectory lib. So actually, we need to go to lib world world dot h, and now this shall compile. Hopefully, <laughs> it must because we haven't changed anything in the code. There it is compiled. We can run it, and we still get our famous greeting hello world, but way more complicated than previously. But the idea here is that you can see what the possibilities are. There is one more mode that we could use for the architecture. The mode is called manual. I um, not want to go into too much detail on how the, all of this manual stuff works. However, this basically means that um, MoxPP is not implementing a feature at all. Down here are a few templates for uh, manual callback functions. There's a manual callback for setup workspace and setup project as well as the include projects callback. Now these callbacks are called on a certain level on a per workspace space as soon as the workspace is configured this function is called this allows you to have custom configuration code for uh, your workspace a premium customization code for the workspace the recommendation is to directly keep the implementation in here and just comment the the function itself out same goes for the project this is basically called per project and you are allowed to kind of like do your own setup on a per project base that you do not need to copy in each of your build.lua files now these two are called automatically and very nicely with uh, all of the other features this one is not this one is kind of like a replacement function this needs to be available if this is not available your build is not going to work and this is only called when everything is set to if the architecture is set to manual then basically this one is called and what you shall do in here is you need to manually include all of your build.lua files but nothing more is required everything else is set it up correctly so if you go to manual you just need to include all of your uh, build.lua files um, and it will work this is basically the the whole idea behind that all right but that's it for 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 that topic so now let's actually go back to our readme.md and say all right we have now correctly set everything up now um the next thing is actually add and modify the project build scripts according to the selected architecture we have already done that because we played around with the architectures we played around with our project so that's already finished um now um, the next thing that that needs to happen is that in case that you have modified anything uh, 
that was shipped with it. So all of these scripts in here, if you change anything in here, don't mind that change. That was just a quick fix of me. Uh, you are already going to get that change that I have done with the uh, latest version of the template. Um, I've just fixed it back here manually. Now, in case you are modifying anything uh, on your own, it's important that you update building.md. We're going to go to building.md in any second, where I'm actually going to show you how all of that works after you have set it up your repository, kind of like your util for it. Um, but in general, the idea is if you are changing any of the shipped scripts, please uh, make sure that you are um, documenting these changes in the building.md file. Now, the next uh, step that we need to do is uh, adding our own scripts. Now, um, the, the library supports or the, the template supports adding your own scripts. Scripts are inside the script directory, scripts directory. So, for example, we have used this init script. Init.py is basically a script that is shipped with it. And the, the purpose of that is to generate the download premake, generate premake, uh, generate colon. So, there are like a hundred lines of code that are in here that are responsible for. Uh, downloading Conan and doing it properly. Actually, you can see that we I'm even like detecting the Visual Studio version here. So there's a hell of a lot of stuff going on here. Um, and it's basically a pre-built script. This is where the power is coming from the repository. It's a pre-built script for initializing your project. And every Python file that's in here is a script that runs for it. You can see that there are also Lua scripts in here. Like here is all of the setup that's done for for Lua. Here's the premake 5 roots root Lua script. They are all inside of the script directory. You can change them if you want. You can uh, customize them. Actually, for example, this deploy.py script, this is actually just a, um, uh, a, a dummy implementation. And actually, this one is designed to be changed by you to do your own custom deploy steps. Um, and what you basically can do is you can add any script that you like. Um, the, the tools here, mox.lua, uh, not mox.lua, mox.bat and mox.sh, which is actually then going to call mox.py. This is all designed to run any script imaginable. So actually, if you want to write your own custom script, for example, I want to have a hello script. So let maybe create a new file or let's call this one my script or my minus action dot py. If I want to define this, my action.py, I can basically just go in and do a, a default Python main here. So if uh, name equals not name equals main, then I want to print this is my action. This is basically how you do it, is you can define your own scripts. And if you want to do your own scripts, you can do this by running mox and then the name mox my action. And you're going to get the output, this is my action. The general idea here is that it is like one uniform way of doing scripts. You always can do them with mocks. And uh, the general idea is that this is like all chaining together nicely. All right. So um, what is the next step that we want to do? Well, we're going to go back to my uh, readme.md. Now adding your own scripts. You can add your own uh, Python scripts by adding them to the scripts folder. You can run them with the mocks tool. Yeah, I already told you that. Working directory is a repository root. Make sure that you document these scripts. Uh, I'm going to... Um, yeah, I'm going to... Yeah, I think it's a good way to actually talk about the building.md here in general. Now let's add the check here and let's actually now switch to the uh, uh, building.md file and actually take a look at what it is in here. Now the, the building.md file is designed to, um, to aid you building um, the project even if the template is already like customized. Now at some point this readme.md is going to go. It's going to be removed because the readme.md from the template is just used to help you getting started with the template and then you shall use it for uh, describing your project, what you're doing with the template. And for that there is the building.md so that all of the information that's required for building is documented in here. There's also again documented how all of that works. You can see that we have some requirements, we have some check marks which uh, platforms are supported by default windows and linux are supported if you are uh, writing something that's not cross-platform you can just remove linux or um, just remove that that x in here and say no i don't support linux um, you can you should also update this in here you should always update building.md because it's important that this is uh, up to date now, then we have a few requirements. If you are adding requirements, for example, uh, the lib, the, the, this UU, this SCD UUID that I have used in the short video is actually requiring UUID dev. Then you would, for example, add UUID dev here for the Linux requirements. This is basically the idea. You're going to modify this one. This is a template that you're going to modify heavily. This is just your starting point. 
Now, then it's going to also show you how it works. Initial configuration windows that you, you run the cone on profile detect, how to set up the build with mox.bat in it. This will um, create the solutions. After setting up the project, you will find the solution file, open this file in, uh, with Visual Studio and start. Then it's going to contain some instructions for Linux. Now, cone on profile detect also works on Linux. Uh, I'm really happy that it nowadays detects the right RB, but I had some really bad experience with the bad RB uh, on, on Linux and Conan, which costed me like maybe a few hours when I've initially used Conan, so I still have the information here that you should, after creating it, open your default profile on Conan and take a look at the at that the uh, libcxx uh, RB is, uh, is at the right version. Then it uh, shows you how this all works on Linux. On Linux, the Mox tool is even more important than on Windows. On Windows, you just, most of the time, if you are developing a library, if you're maintaining it, it's a bit different. If you're adding your libraries and your structure, you always need to run Mox in it. But if at some point, the library is going to be at, at a certain state and you're not going to add uh, a new project, at least not very lightly. And if you're a developer, you just need to run Mox in it once and you work with Visual Studio. On Linux, it's a bit more... Um, it's a bit harder because all of the setup like debugging directories are not done automatically and building is also not done automatically with Visual Studio. This is why there's also a, a build command in here. Um, there's a run command which allows you to run the executables or multiple executables in multiple versions. So this is all a bit more documented on Linux. Now we are getting to the interesting part, the actual actions that are configured. Now these are all the actions that are supported by the Mox tool by default. So for example, we already knew, know that Mox in it. Initializing the project, running uh, Conan, running pre make to make sure everything is generated. Now we also have a mox build action, uh, uh, not build, but a mox build action with a configuration. So for example, if I want to have a debug build, I can say mox build debug. So you can see if I take a look at the uh, debug at uh, the build directory, you can see that we just have a deploy one, but no debug, no release. If I do a mox debug, you can actually so see that uh, we are compiling this with MS build. And uh, if this is finishing, um, take a few seconds. Now it's finished. Um, if we are taking a look at the build directory now, I also have a debug directory with all the the debugging uh, library and the debugging exe. So build even through it's like mainly designed to run on uh, Linux. It also of course works on Windows. Now run. It is also implemented on Windows. So what I can do is uh, I can do a mox run. And then I need to specify the executable that I want to run. Uh, as you can see, my build output is uh, the hello.exe. So if I would try this out with hello, we will get an error that the file was not found because by default, it is using a release configuration. If I want to specify a configuration, I need to do something like that. I can say deploy see deploy and then I get my hello world output here again. Or we have a debug build. So debug, I can also do this. Or if I want to have a release build, I can also quickly say build me that on release. It's going to build that from the command line. And then I can do my mox run hello also on release and I get my output. So that's also supported in here. Now um, we have a deploy script as well. We haven't talked about that one. Deploy is a uh, script that helps you deploying it. I talked about that you can customize that. Currently it's just packing all of the outputs of the binary directory in a zip. So if I do a mox deploy, um, you're going to get a few more folders, um, uh, a deploy folder and inside of the deploy folder there's a release folder and there's a package.zip. Um, um, I cannot, oh, this is a bit sad that Visual Studio Code is not able to uh, do them, but if I reveal this in the file explorer and I would open up the package.zip, you can actually see that we have the hello.exe, pdp, world.lib, and the world.pdb. That's not really the idea. Normally, you wouldn't want to maybe ship the PDBs in the lib files, but currently, it's just dumbly copying everything from the uh, binary output directory. But this is kind of like the idea why you should customize it. Customizing that is not even that hard. So... Um, what you could do, you could go in the, but if I do this, it will no longer work on Linux, so I'm not going to do this yet. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the kind of like the idea of deploy. And of course, deploy also works for other configurations, even though I don't know why you would want to deploy a diva configuration, but it's possible. You can, of course, do it, um, but you need to be aware that the script is changeable and you need to, to uh, make sure that you are kind of like still following the concept. And this is a basic Python script. You can see configuration is parsing is done automatically here already. And the same with the temp directory and the deploy directory. It is all automatically set up. And if you are just changing everything from the to do, it will probably be good as soon as you are putting all your temporary files in the temp directory and your deployed files in the deploy directory. Uh, but the idea is you can easily get started with that.
Uh, we have the clean action. We already talked about that one. We have multiple cleaning schemes. We can uh, clean the output. This is basically cleaning all generated data. If I do this in this case, we can do this here. Mox clean output. We can leave this empty because output is the one that it's defaulting to. But you can also provide this. Mox clean output. You can see that the hell a lot of folders are gone. The deploy folder is gone. The build folder is gone. And the temp folder is gone. So it got annihilated. Now you can see that uh, we also can de 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 delete the project or, or clean the project. You already have done that. Uh, there's also a clean option where you can clean all, which is cleaning everything. And there's an option we haven't talked about, the dependencies. Mox clean dependencies. If I do that, basically the dependency folder will disappear, which means that I'm no longer able to build my project. If I would do a Mox build, uh, here, it's gonna give us some some problems because it can no longer uh, open the include files and it can no longer open the link files because I cleaned my dependencies. Um, that's bad. So I need to run a mox in it again so that they are uh, again premake is downloaded. Uh, Codan is gonna run. It's gonna regenerate the solutions and then the mox build will succeed. Wait a few seconds. So it really can succeed and. Boom, we are done. We already talked about Mox Run so that we can actually run something. Um, there's another one called Mox Audio Gen. This is done, uh, it's designed for pipelines. It will do an init build and deploy step so that if you want to pipeline your code, you can just do a Mox, uh, Mox, Mox Audio Gen. Actually, Audio Gen is a default option. Um, I can do it so you can see that all works. Let's do another clean here so that the output is cleaned. Uh, actually, if you do not provide any arguments, it will automatically auto generate your project and release configuration. So if I just do a mox, it's going to do an autogen, which is doing an init. Then it's going to do a build. As you can see here, MS build is running. And when MS build is done, it will uh, it will do a deploy. And now you can see you have the deploy folder with a release configuration in here. So it is as simple as that. If you want to kind of like download the library that's built uh, with uh, or a project that's built with uh, mox pp, uh, you just need to tell your people that they need to run mox. If at least if they are Windows. On Linux, it's a bit different. On Linux, you need to run dot slash mox dot sh. That's just how it works. And that's basically it. Now, the ah, no, a bit, th not as it is. We have done, we have uh, really forgotten something important, right? Readme told us that we shall also uh, list if we are writing our custom actions. And we have done one, even through it does nothing, but we shall document it. So we have my action. This is what we have implemented. It's a dummy output, nothing more. But we should document it. It is important that I really want to raise, raise the awareness. If you are doing something here, document this. People are going to be grateful if you're doing it. My action, dummy output. Now we know what it is. My action, dummy output. Exactly what it does. All right, now we can continue on with our readme.md. Now the readme.md um, continues a few things. Now the first thing is that we shall decide to select the desired license. Now I'm not a lawyer, I cannot give legal advice and I don't want to give legal advice, but MoxPP is designed that you can use it without mentioning it. Why is it designed like that? Well, if you're taking a look at these files, the copyright is in here for the company, my company. Uh, the copyright is in here, it is uh, described, it is there, it is attributed correctly, it is licensed under the mid-license. However, it is not required that you kind of like add it to your license file on your Git repository because it is just some scaffolding. If you're distributing your project, MoxPP is not being included. MoxPP is, it's not a thing. It is not inside of your output. Inside of your output is SPD log and FMT in this case, but not MoxPP, because MoxPP is just your scaffolding to build a project. Same with Premake, also just your scaffolding. Conan, also just your scaffolding to build a project. Not, it's not inside your binary that you're producing. Um, but again, don't take my word for that. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just explaining it from my point of view how it is for Mox. This does not need to be the standpoint of Conan. This does not need to be the standpoint of JFrog owning Conan. Does not need to be the standpoint of Premake. My standpoint for MoxPP, the template library. Now, what we want to do now is we want to push our changes to Git. So I actually want to uh, add a commit message here saying uh, customizing on Windows. So now that we have done the customizing on Windows, uh, let's push this to Git Hub and let's follow it by adding a license. How can we add a license? Well, I would recommend that you add your license through GitHub because it's easier. Uh, if you're having a... Um, 
a public repository. You can easily um, get your license up by going to your repository settings. If while I'm going to the settings, I can quickly disable all of that stuff that I don't need. So remove all of that stuff. And what you want to do is um, you want to go to insights and you want to go to community standards. And if you go in here, you're going to see how well your community standards are. And you're going to see that you're not going to have a check at license and you can basically click on add license here and you can design and you can select which license you want to add. In this case, it's my private uh, repository. So it is my, my personal name. And I'm going to say I'm going to review this and I want to submit this. And what I can do here now is I can review the license in here and I want to now commit the changes uh, directly to the main branch in this case uh, create license if I commit my changes here now uh, the mox pp tutorial itself has a license in this case it is the mid license and uh, yeah everything is good you can already see that uh, something has reflected here um, I could edit now and make the check yeah let's maybe let's maybe do the check here on github online because it is fun I can actually do this in the preview no sadly not <laughs> <laughs> So let's make the check in here. I've cho chosen the license, updated readme that I'm the end, go for it, done. Now, of course, these changes needs to be uh, pulled on here as well. So there it is. Now the changes are in here. Now, um, the next thing that I want to do is I want to now actually show you how it works on Linux. Because I think it's important that you also talk about Linux. I'm not sure if Linux will work from that machine, so but what we're going to see. Uh, let's open up a terminal here. It's a PowerShell, but I don't care. And I want to SSH into my Linux VM. And for that, if I would just know my IP address, but that's not a problem. 10.04.11. Uh, 10.04.11. And we want to go for the local admin at that host. Let's see if I can get to that VM from there. Seems good. And yeah, I'm in that VM. It works. That's nice. And now I am here on my VM and I want to clone the code to the VM. So let's copy that code and let's do a git clone. And it's going to clone in there. It's done. So if I list this, I can cd into the mox pp uh, tutorial in here. Right, so now we want to actually uh, run that here. So uh, since we are on Linux here, we need to replace the mocks by uh, dot slash mocks.sh, but then we also just need to type in init. It will uh, do all it works. And as you can see, it has now generated make files. It has generated a root make file and a make file for the two projects that we have. And um, what we now can do is uh, we can... Uh, yeah, build the actual project. Now, we could on Linux just use make automatically, but I want to do just hit build with my system. And you can see it's building a word. It's now building hello and it has linked hello and it seems good. Now on Linux, we do definitely need to use the run command because it's not possible otherwise. So what I can do is I can run hello and you can see that we are being greeted by our nice little hello world. Now of course, all other comments work as well. So I can do a quick clean all, for example, to have this all cleaned. And then I could uh, quickly run a plainly mocks for doing a whole autogen mocks which is doing everything again, including building um, uh, and, and really like everything that we need. There we go. Now everything is done. If I go to LS, I have my deploy directory where I can actually can go into CD release. And then I can do something like maybe do a quick unzip package.zip to see what's in here. And you can see that we have the lib word.a and the uh, hello executable. Of course, there's again everything in here. And yeah dot slash hello then we can also run it there we go um of course we again have everything in here but yeah that's curve like yeah, the point in here and as you can see uh like a charm it, it, it worked simply um and what we can do now since we uh have uh also tested this on linux we can now make the check mark on Linux. And now we have all boxes checked. Only one is missing. Uh, the only one that is missing is the now you shall remove this uh, readme file and pre replace it with your description of your project. Uh, there's a few more information about licenses and the building.md file that you shall keep. But I'm going to definitely do what they suggested. I'm going to delete the readme's content and I'm going to write my own. So mox pp tutorial uh, this. 
ist äh, Ludwig Fuse äh, Tutorial for Mox PP. Take a look at Mox PP here. Maybe we want to do it like that, so it gets in a new line, and then we want to yeah, reference Mox PP, so generate it from Mox PP. Let's copy the, the path here. There we go. Now we can go back to my repository. And what I will do is I will paste in that link here. It shall automatically do that. And now I have added my, my readme, so updated readme. And then we can do a, a commit and sync these changes. And if I then refresh somewhere here on my GitHub page, you can see it has changed. This is the Ludwig Fusel tutorial for MoxPP. Take a look at MoxPP here. And you still get your building.md that tells you how to build a project, that it supports Windows and Linux, and all the uh, configuration is still shown here, including my dummy action. It's everything still reflected, everything still documented, but our readme now is in a way more better format for this project. If it is better for the project, it's arguable, but yeah, that's it. And now we would, of course, gonna go in and remove all that carnage and add all the other proper ones, but we don't need that here for that one. But that's kind of like the idea of MoxVP. I know that video was again a bit longer, but I hope it was interesting for you to see. So thank you for watching. Uh, see you in uh, the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe and uh, have a nice day. Bye.